I'm going to preach something this morning that, and I don't mean no disrespect, Sister Robin, wherever you're at. I'm going to preach a message this morning that some of you heard this just this past Saturday. Not yesterday, but Saturday before. Preached it at a funeral. And I feel like this is what the Lord wants me to speak today. And I tossed it around and I was like, because in my feeble mind, I, I looked and I felt like the person that should be here for this message is not here. But maybe it's for others as well as a reminder. I may briefly mentioned Wednesday night that we all believe that Jesus can come back at any moment. We preach, we teach, and we believe that any time now that those eastern skies can split up, that Gable can blow that trumpet. So don't misunderstand me. But sometimes I think we get so wrapped up in his return, we forget that the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. James chapter 4 and verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For well, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanish away. Yes. In 2006, the Western movie Broken Trail made its debut. It was said in the late 1800s, and it's a story of how two cowboys, Prentice Ritter and Tom Hart, became reluctant guardians of five abused and abandoned Chinese girls. They had been sold into prostitution. They transport them along with a herd of horses, of which the horses they hoped to sell from Oregon to Wyoming. One of the girls died in an accident. Mr. Prentice Ritter is placed in the position to give the eulogy. He says, we are all travelers in this world. From the sweet grass to the packing house, birth till death, we travel between the eternities. In simple yet profound cowboy lingo, he sums up this journey we call life, traveling between the eternities. And I'm gonna to speak to you on that dog this morning for just a few minutes, between the eternities. Our lives are nothing more than, or we're just like a pebble that's tossed into a pond. It leaves never or leaves ever winding rings and ripples of influence. And long after that pedal disappears, the ripples continue. We're all pilgrims just traveling in time between two vast expanses. And those expanses they know no time or limitations. Every day we hear the invasion that death makes. Almost every news outlet carries an obituary column. Every day funeral homes are busy with the task of taking care of someone's loved ones. Every day new graves are opened in cemeteries. Everywhere around you, there are signs 
of approaching death. The leaves fade away. They die. And they fall from the trees. The grass withers away. Life hangs on a slender thread. And that thread, it could break at any moment. Death affects everybody. Death comes to the palace as well as the ghetto. It comes to the good and it comes to the bad. It's not biased, nor is it prejudice. Death does not distinguish between race, does not distinguish between nationality, nor your social status. Death knows no gender or generational bias. Death comes to all. I do not speak this this morning to scare anyone, but we need to step back and understand that our own personal appointment with God can come at any moment. Yeah. And if we truly believe that, why do we live the way we live? Why do we live as if we will have tomorrow? Why do we live as if we will have next year? I don't know about you, but I've already pulled a calendar out and I started marking things for next year. It's usually around the time that I do that. But as I was writing those things down, and I realized that, you know, I'm not even promised tomorrow. All right, brother. And don't misunderstand me. I know that we need to make plans. We need to set things in motion. I'm not, if you know me, you know I don't like last minute stuff. It needs to be planned out. So we need to do those things. But as we're making those plans, are we making our plans at the same time that tomorrow I could be facing my God? I can be facing him not as my Savior, but as my judge. Why do we live? If we know death can come at any moment, why do we live as though we have 50, 60, 70 years left to live? Parents, not one of our children, not one of our grandchildren are spared the fact that death could come. Don't preach like that, Brother Stewart. No, I think it's time that it's being preached. I think it's time to let somebody know it's not time to play games. It's not time to come to church and play around and just do what you want to do. But it's time that we get serious with God because at any moment, death can enter my house. We don't have tomorrow. Hebrews 9 and 27 says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, judgment. Have you ever noticed when you go to a funeral, you, 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 the value of life begins to grow in magnitude. Something is triggered in you. I don't know about you, but when I look over into a casket and I see someone laying there, Sister Jennifer, it's triggering in my life. This could be me right here. Yes, it does. This could be me laying right here. What would my life, what would my eternity be like? Did I live a life that was pleasing to God? Did I leave a legacy that my children and my grandchildren can look at and say, I want to live like that because one day I want to see them again. Not one person under the sound of my breath and those that may listen and watch later are exempt from death. When death happens, the value of life grows in magnitude. When death happens, it steps in and it disrupts the normalcy of our lives. And death's very intrusion comes to with the real, realization that one day, one day we will also feel the cold touch of death. 
You see, death comes suddenly. Death comes surely. And I'm not talking just to senior citizens in here today, but I'm talking to the children as well. I'm talking to you parents. What are you doing? What is the legacy you're leaving behind for your children if your time was to come tomorrow? Or tonight? Or when you're on your way home? No, Brother Stewart's not trying to scare you this morning. I want us to understand that we're not promised tomorrow. That the Word of God says that our life is but a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. That's not Stuart, that's Bible. Not one day of our life is guaranteed. We live each, every day we wake up. And I'm going to tell you right now, we take every day we wake up, or mostly every day, we take it for granted. <laughs> we take it for granted as if God owed us another day. God died. God wrote himself in flesh. He walked this earth. He went to a cruel Calvary. He went to a cruel cross. He died for you and I. He rose again on the third day so that you and I can have a chance at eternity and glory. He don't have to do not one other thing for us. But we live solely by the mercy of God. We may start this day out, and we may have already started as we have, but that does not mean we will finish this day. Only God knows that. What is your life? It's but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8 says, There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. The process of our life is concluded at death. But it began at birth. From the very first breath that we breathe, we begin a journey traveling between eternities. <coughs> if I'm coming across angry or upset, it's, it's not anger or being upset. But it's a concern that we have lost our way with God. It's a concern that we have come to church and we know how to have church. But we're not changed when we leave here. We still walk out with the same mentality, with the same attitude that I'll have tomorrow. I'll have this day or I'll have that day. But no church. We're not promised our very next breath. And there's only two roads for us to travel. One road is broad. It's a broad road that leads to eternal destruction. And there are many on that road. The other is a narrow road, a narrow path that leads to eternal life. What road are you on this morning? I'm not talking to lost people this morning. I'm talking to saved people. I'm not talking to sinners. I'm not talking to those who are sitting on bar stools. But I'm talking to you, the sitting in a church seat this morning, on a church pew this morning. That altars are empty. Altars have been dry for too long. It's time we get back to the altars. As I mentioned Wednesday night, whether it was for me or not, it's time that I get back to an altar and I shed tears on that altar and I pour my heart out to God because when I walk out of this place, I. I want to know if my time comes. The next words I hear will be well done. God 
help me if I can get behind this pulpit and I override what God wants me to preach. Because God, I want to preach them to get them on their feet. I want to preach them to run the aisles. I want to preach them just to shout and be joyous. The church is time that we put aside the shout for a moment and look in the mirror and examine our hearts and know and understand that my life is but a vapor. There's somebody in here now still thinking, oh, i got plenty of time. How do you know that? Because you're not paying attention. It wasn't just a few years ago. I went to three funerals in one day. The first one I went to, it was a, a lady that was in her 80s. You would think, okay, she lived a good life. But the second one I went to, this young man was in his uh, early 30s. And the third one I went to later that evening, barely beginning the teenage life. Death knows no age. We need to get that out of our mindset. We need to get rid of that mentality that today is the day that i got to make sure everything's right. Which road are you on today? Well, I play drums. I sing. I play the bass. I play the guitar. I play the keyboard. I sing in church. I teach in church. That's not what I'm asking. What road are you on today? We get so engulfed, especially as Pentecostals. We get so engulfed in going through the motions. We, we get so wrapped up in having church as usual. We came to church. We took up prayer requests. We sang a few songs. We took up the tithes and offerings. The preacher preached for a few minutes. We went to altar for about 30 seconds. And we go home and we tell people we went to church. Well, you're right. That's all you did was go to church. But when will we stop just coming to church? When will we treat every time and every opportunity that we have to go through these doors as this may be the last time that I can pray, that I can worship with my other members here, my family of the Pentecostals of Watson. Maybe this is the last time. Maybe I never need to put everything into it. Maybe I need to let somebody know that God loves them. Maybe I don't need to drag in anymore. Maybe I don't need to walk in with my head down. Maybe I need to walk in with my head up. With my arms in the air. With my heart in the air. With my heart rejoicing. Thanking God because he has been good to me. Some of us walk into church sometimes. You have to do a whole lot of talking to convince me that God has been good to you. Oh, I know we all have problems. I know we all have troubles. I know uh, we all go through those valleys. I know that. Yes. But why is it we walk in as giving the devil victory? Come on, come on. We don't do a whole lot of testimony services. I don't want to get somebody to tell me how good the devil's been this week. <laughs> It's time to start being the church. Heaven or hell, heaven is a, a place without pain. Hell is a place without peace. Heaven is joy without sorrow. Hell is sorrow without joy. Heaven is light without darkness. And hell is darkness without light. 
Heaven is rejoicing without regrets. Hell is full of regrets without rejoicing. If today, hear me please, I wish, I pray, I don't wish, I pray that you would take this preacher serious this morning. If today, if today we were gathered at your funeral, where would you be? Where would your soul be? Let me say this again. We're all travelers and pilgrims in a world that offers no lasting peace. We travel between the past and the future. Yeah. Waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for our final, eternal destination. Jesus said in Matthew 25 that the evil shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Death is a destiny that we all face. When our journey here is completed, we will face eternity. Our destination at the moment of death will be decided. But you see, today is still undetermined. Today we're still traveling between eternities. And our choice is one we can still make today. As I said at the beginning, how often do you think about what if I die today? What if this church later today begins to put in motion the plans for my funeral? For just a moment, take your mind off of something that's very true and very real, that he can return in any moment, any moment. And think about your life. You see, I don't know when he's coming back. It could be five, it could be ten years from now, it could be twenty years, it could be five minutes from now. Mrs. Jennifer, what if I don't make it to those Easter skies or spread open? And he calls my number today. Which road are you on today? Jesus. When your time is up, before someone in a casket. What decision would you have made? Parents, grandparents, what legacy are you leaving behind for those little ones? Oh, 
if you leave this world today, will your children, will your grandchildren be able to look at you and say that mom and dad, grandpa, grandpa, they live for God. God was first in their life. Will they look in that casket and say, my mama, my daddy, my brother, they're in heaven. Or will there be doubts in their mind? Between eternities. I'm going to open these altars for everybody. Not one certain group, not everybody right now. I want to open these altars. I want to open this front. And I want you to leave this place knowing that your life is but a, but a vapor. Come on. If you're sincere about your soul, you're sincere about your legacy right now.